Hello there ladies and gentlemen, I'm Simon from Games Deconstructed and it's been a couple weeks since the release of Modern Horizons 3, the third installment in the series of sort of infusions of power straight into Magic's modern format. Historically, the cards printed in these were very powerful and MH3 was no exception. Among these cards is a particular bird that has Magic Twitter abuzz, and among this buzz there are some key voices like the prolific pro player Andrea Mangucci mentioning that his local modern events have stopped firing due to people not wanting to play against Nadu decks. Another key voice, Robert Taylor, spotlighted how five of the top eight places at the SCG 10k were taken up by Nadu decks. So, I wanted to take a look at the stats from existing events in 2024 to see how big the scale of the problem really was. In order to do that, I wrote a short scraper to get all the event links from mtgtop8.com. I included a one second sleep time so as to not overwhelm their servers. Afterwards, I wrote a second not so little scraper to get all the deck names from all of these events. Also included a sleep time of one second not to overwhelm their servers. By the way, huge props, mtgtop8.com. If I can send some money your way or anything else, let me know. So I pulled all the 2024 data, which resulted in about 1,100 events and about 11,400 decks that scored some place in them, usually within the top 8 or top 32. And with magic data being notoriously noisy, especially deck names, I aimed to answer a very simple question using this data. What percentage of the meta is currently made up of the top 1 to 3 decks? And one to three decks it was my selection here, as in metas where there is a so-called tier zero deck, a deck that's very powerful to the point of shaping the meta around it, there's often another deck or two decks that also rise to prominence due to having a good matchup against that tier zero deck. In this case, the tier zero deck being Nadu, and the deck that also rises to prominence as a result being Wandering Jeskai Control. And here are the results. That blue line is the percentage representation of the top 1 deck, orange is top 2, and green is top 3. That red mark over here is when MH3 dropped. You can see that there is a short lull, a sort of unsolved meta with new cards, people waiting for their cards to come in post and all that, but afterwards, there is a surge in all three of our metrics. It's mostly driven by the top one deck, that's kind of why it looks like a reflection, the other two look like reflections of the top one, and that top one deck is gobbling up more and more of the meta share. That top deck, Nadu, breaks the 20% threshold and then falls down a bit. And this is when the first alarm bells begin to ring, as Nadu becomes overwhelmingly overrepresented in day 2s, top 8, top 32s, it still remains mostly in the hands of early adopters. And we get to the last week of data, this is the week that's currently ongoing as I speak, and things take a sharp turn. Top 3 deck representation fast approaches 50%. To help you picture it, here are some examples of modern events from the past week. Creature's Toolbox means Nadu. And of course, we have to take into account that MTG Top 8 also includes many local tournaments where no one is playing Nadu, either due to card availability or personal preference. So if you're playing a proper grinder-heavy tournament, those percentages will very likely be higher. And by higher, I mean top 8s, top 32s, where one-third of all players are playing Nadu. Or over half of players are either on Nadu, Wandering Jeskai, and maybe either Boros or Mardu Agro. And that's of course counting other One Ring control variants like Four Color, Omnath, Esper as separate decks, which your mileage may vary on how different of a playstyle these are. As a comparison, we've had another meta in 2024 that was slightly similar, and that meta would be the first quarter of 2024, with Rhinos being the top deck. Prior to the Violent Outburst ban, we've had an over 40% top 3 deck concentration as well. 
where 40% of the field was either on Rhinos, Court of Calling Toolbox, or like either post-ban scam, Ragdos scam, or another deck, depending on which week we are talking about. But that meta was not driven by Rhinos in the same way Nadu decks shape the meta now. As you can see here, Rhinos never really broke the 20% of meta threshold. And the situation of course abated after the ban of Violent Outburst, with the top 3 decks falling under 30% representation, and the top deck, which would either be some sort of Chord of Calling Toolbox deck or Amulet Titan, only making up around 10% of all decks for quarter 2. To see how this plays into the wider discussion about Modern Horizons sets breaking the meta every time, I pulled the same data from the Hogak era. And nope, it's not the same thing. Hogak decks did have a brief surge in popularity, making up about 17 or 18% of the meta share, but they didn't warp the meta around them to the same degree Nadu decks do now. For example, the cumulative meta share of the top 3 decks never really broke 40% in that period. Without comparing to some of the other often criticized dark times of magic, like Ragavan, like Eldrazi Winter, it's hard to say if this is the worst the modern meta has ever been, but I'm sure it's pretty damn close. Thanks a lot for watching, I've been Simon from Games Deconstructed, pleasure having you on the channel, hope you stick around, bye.